Hello people, today we are going to be talking about the two ADC switches and I will be telling you everything about them. So first off, what is ADC? ADC is an analog to digital converter. It takes an analog signal, which is just a voltage, and it converts it to a digital signal, which is the voltage, but in a digital readable format. So here is the wiring diagram for switches. We're going to take the 3.3 volt, we're going to split it, and we're going to connect it to your two foot switches. They can be hand switches, they can be whatever switches you want. I called them foot switches here. And in this case, I use a symbol for a potentiometer, because you can use those and get a variable voltage and tune it to the amount of pressure that you want if it's a pressure sensitive switch. From there, you're going to go out and then each switch is going to have its own pull down resistor to ground. Uh, I put R2K, which is a 2K resistor, which is a common value, seems to work for most people. Uh, and then the first switch is going to go to ADC1. And the second switch is going to go to ADC2. Now, the reason why you need a pull down resistor is because the ADC1 and ADC2 are analog pins, so they're floating halfway between 3.3 volts and ground on their own until you change them. Now, if all you had connected was, let's say for this first uh, first one, foot one uh, to ADC1, even if it's, you know, 10 bajillion ohms resistance, uh, this ADC1, the electricity has no path to go. So it's just going to go through there anyway, and it's going to pull it to 3.3 volts most of the time you know, depending on how many ohms, but it's going to be very easy to pull to 3.3 volts. So then when you put pressure on your sensor and it reduces the resistance, it doesn't really matter because it was already getting pulled up to 3.3 volts. So by adding this path down here to ground, what that does is this ADC one comes here and it says, all right, what is the path of least resistance? This switch with no pressure on it at a very high resistance value or this 2K resistance value to ground. This 2K is much less, so it goes to ground. And then when you put weight on this, the resistance drops from, you know, 100K, 20K, 10K, and then, you know, 2K or below 2K, suddenly it's like, well, okay, there's less resistance here. So I'm going to raise the voltage up towards 3.3 volts. And so, you know, if you're 2K here and then 2K here, it's going to go half to each. If it's, you know, 1K here and 2K here, it's going to go uh, two thirds here, one third here, um, and that's kind of how resistors work. It's basically a voltage divider. Uh, you can look up on that, but the nice thing about the pull down resistor is that you can tune it to adjust the sensitivity of your switch as well as just setting your ADC value in the VEST tool. So that is the wiring diagram and why you need pull down resistors. So, next, let me show you in the VEST tool. We bring up this view. Cool, my webcam is still working. Um, so, actually, let me look at it here so I can see myself. All right, so you can see my ADC1 is set to 1.5. It's just floating. And so here, this is ADC1. This is 3.3 volts. If I touch them together, you can see it instantly jumps to high. Now, if I disconnect them, it goes halfway. Now, if there was a resistor between these, it would pretty much just go to three uh, all the time. But because it's nothing there, it just goes back to the unused state. So if you're just doing an open closed switch, you don't necessarily need your pull down resistors. Now, let's see, let's set up some settings in the app here. Ooh, okay, so that's bad because you're not gonna be able to see what I'm doing. Let me adjust this camera. Move it. Oh, I'll lock this. I forgot that I was going to need to show you guys that view, but I want to keep my webcam big uh, so you can see what I'm doing with all these wires. Okay, that's, that's how it's going to be. Okay, so walk in some of the settings you need to see. Okay, so if I have both of these set to zero, you can see the switch value on bottom is always on. Now, if I change this to, let's say, two volts for ADC1, and then write the app config. Um, oh, I wrote one volt. We want two volts uh, so that it's higher. See, here we go. Now switch value is off. So now when I touch these two and I go above my two volt threshold, switch value is now on, off, on, off, on, 
great. But what happens if I set a second switch voltage? So here we'll set this one to two as well and write app config. Now switch value is off and when I connect this, it only is set to half. So what is half? And first let me disconnect this guy here from ground. So now I have my two ADCs floating. I can connect them both to the switch. Oh God, that's bad. What did I do? Did I do something wrong? Oh, I just shorted to ground. I connected it to the wrong one. Hopefully we didn't break the VESC. Let me connect this back to ADC2 and reconnect here. Oh, sweet. Okay, our VESC is not broken. That's nice. Okay, so we've got two floating ADC pins. Connect these both to there. You can see switches on. I take one off, we're half. Take the other one off. You can't see that, but we're back to half. So both on, on, one on, half. So what half is, basically, there is this configurable half ERPM fault. So uh, to start the vehicle riding, you're going to need it to be on. But to stop the vehicle, if you are in half and you are below this uh, 1000 ERPM or whatever you configured it to, it'll stop. So you have to be going slow and in half, and that way you can shut it off by partially removing your foot, foot instead of just like having to completely jump off or having it shut off while you're moving quickly if you slip off the sensor a little bit. Um, and the fault delay will apply to that as well. So if you've got a fault delay of one second, you know, if you jump off completely, it'll still take one second to shut off. Or if you lift off half and you're below the speed, it'll take that one second. And this fault delay might be buggy. It seems to work for some people and not work for other people. So use that with caution. Okay, so that is uh, the half switch state. And that is explained. Cool. So let's connect this guy back to ground so I don't short anything again. Good. Now let's pull the camera over and I'm going to show you how to make a sensor. Now the sensor that I'm making, I just created, I drew a little circuit on my table with my kitchen counter <laughs> with copper foil tape. Uh, and this, uh, sensor and I've got a little piece of Velostat here. So this is kind of making a DIY sensor. Now the spacing and the sensitivity is going to be different if you make a giant thing with different shapes and sizes of tape. So it's going to be, you know, experimentation. Don't just copy this and assume it'll work perfectly. But uh, you can see there's a zigzag and the two sides are not connected and the Velostat is going to go on top of them and connect it. So first, let me connect. This is my 3.3. Going to connect 3.3 over here. Now, this is my ADC1, and I'm going to connect my ADC1 over here. Now, hopefully, these connections will work. So, uh, ADC1 is floating at 1.45. I put this on here, and you can see it's super sensitive. If I just like touch it in the slightest, it's curved upward. If I turn it over this way, it'll probably, yeah, see, it's already jumping to three because uh, it's just too sensitive. But thankfully, I have this resistor over here, uh, which is actually a 3K resistor, and I chose 3K because it was what I happened to have sitting around. Uh, okay, so we can connect this 3K resistor to ground. Now you can see, oh, this connection is not good. Oh, I'm just going to have to keep my finger on this. Okay, so now when I've got... What is up with this connection? Come on. There it is. So now you can see that it is jumping all the way to zero because the ADC1 is connected to ground. So now when I put this Velostat over it, uh, it still waits, no, because the ground got disconnected again. Okay, let's squish this down. Let me get a new piece of tape. And copper tape, fresh copper tape for this connection. We're doing it live. 
the joys of a live science experiment. At least there isn't a room full of like six year olds who are like laughing at me. Okay. That literally did nothing. Why won't this ground connection work? Ah, The other ones are working. Why won't you work? What if I just slip this under here with pressure? And just do that. Oh, okay, sick. So now we're at zero volts. I put this velostat on and, you know, we popped up a little bit. Now, as I put pressure on, you could see it's raising. I push harder, 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 and I've got a whole nice range of sensitivity. Although, apparently, I can't go over 2.5 no matter how hard I push. Uh, which is fine, but now we know we have a good tunable sensor. So, let me bring the vest tool back open. Well, actually, I have it set to 2 volts, which is, like, pretty good. Basically, if I stood on this... Uh, we would be at 2 volts, and then if I unstep, we're off. So if I set this switch here to 0 volts, right app config, we're now off. And if I put pressure, we're on. And if I put less pressure, we're off. On, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. And this is, I'm not even letting go. I'm just adjusting the pressure. So anyway, that is a... Uh, foot sensor tutorial, everything explained. I think that that should answer all the questions. That's how you make a circuit, um, how you make a sensor. It's what half state is. It's what that's everything. It, that's it. I'm done talking. I got nothing else to say to you guys. Uh, peace out.